Good morning. morning. Welcome to Great Lutheran Church on this wonderful Sunday morning. We're happy that you're here and delighted that you can join us online as well as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of announcements before we continue today. Um, No Sunday school or confirmation class for today. Uh, They resume next Sunday, September the 12th. On September 19th, we, uh, Grace Church will be hosting uh, Back to Church Sunday. So what does this mean? You get to invite a friend, family member, uh, co-worker to come and worship at Grace Church for that day. So the work is out there to be made and it's you that's gonna be bringing people to church that day. Also, don't forget to fill out our blue cards that we have there. Um, as we track attendance in that way. Uh, If you can turn to page seven for me, for a quick second here. Uh, If you see in the middle it says, uh, up to the, uh, we all believe on one true God. That children's message is gonna be right before that song, after the gospel. That'll be the only change that we're having this morning. And um, without any further more announcements, Today we have in our text lesson the story of the deaf mute man and how Jesus heals him and approaches him. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Please stand as we uh, start with our invocation hymn. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. Thank you. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. 
Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from James chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name of which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin, and you are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What is good it is, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, You have faith and I have works, show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord.
returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee and the region of the Capitals. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he puts his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to them, Ephraim, that is, be open. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed him. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. All right. So, as we are incorporating children's message uh, in this new season, we're going to incorporate all the church to help me out with children's message today. So, I'm going to do a couple of sign language that you may know and you may not know, which is okay. It's part of our teaching today. So, if I say, okay, you understood that, right? And if I say, right? Well, imagine you didn't have that way to communicate. So if you wanted to convey to me without sending me a text message, an email, Instagram, or any of that matter, without any words, how would you say that you were hungry? You broke your stomach or, right? In El Salvador, if, it was, if I'm really hungry, I'd be like... <laughs> so, that's one way. How about if you want to go throw the football or play football, what would you do without, again, speaking any words or writing it down? Jimmy says, well, yeah, you might grab a football, but if you didn't have a football, Jimmy says you do this, and then you do that, right? But then if I said to you, look, what would you say? play soccer, right? Well, that's what's happening here in our text this morning. Is Jesus is coming to this deaf mute guy and addressing his issue personally. And he speaks his language. And that's the good thing about Jesus, that when he comes to us, he comes to us at our language. And we're thankful for that. And so Jesus will not leave us stranded thinking, what did he say? No, he comes to us clear. And that's what happens this morning with our deaf mute man. Jesus touches his ear, then his tongue, and he proclaims those words, Ephatha, which is the open. Amen. And for that, we're thankful. Let us close our eyes and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you because you come to us in a language that we understand. And you have made clear your love for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Please stand.
Grace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He sighed and he said, Ephatha, that means be open. In our text today, Jesus is on a mission once again. And prior to the man that is deaf mute was introduced to him, a couple of things had happened. For example, the feeding of the 5,000, the calming of the storm event, setting the record straight with the Pharisees and the scribes when it came to the unclean and clean, and finally the Gentile. Jesus is outside the borders of Israel, leaving Capernaum, going to Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre is only about five miles away from Sidon, that's going up north. So Jesus is, telling, is walking on this journey, and as he is going on this journey, he's going up, then to come back down to the capitalist. That's where our story is at today. Well, just to make it a little bit more sense, as we don't know that much where the capitalist and all this is at, so just think about it like this. From Woodbridge, you're traveling to Alexandria, and from Alexandria to Arlington. And to make it Woodbridge, you're going first down to Richmond, and that's what Jesus is doing right now. That's about 123 miles of traveling. Mind you, there was no cars, so there's probably some kind of either horse or walking combination going on there. But Mark does not tell us anywhere else in, uh, in the book that he's going to, to Tyre and Sidon. So this is where we're at. Jesus is traveling in the outskirts of Israel, away from his enemies, and just taking that time to instruct his disciples and teaching them uh, all these events. And so apart from that, Jesus is taking the time to help people outside of Israel as well. And Mark emphasizes this miracle since it is done away from the crowd. They bring him a man that is deaf mute and had a speech impediment. So whatever sound that he would have made, you and I will not be able to understand. So when the crowd, bring, the crowd brings him this man, they ask of Jesus specifically one request, and that is, hey, can you lay your hands on him as a signal that you're going to heal him? And you see, this gives away one thing, and that's probably the crowd already had heard of Jesus and how he worked. So they asked him to lay a hand on this man that is dealing with the sickness. So let's think about this for a minute before we continue on. Now picture yourself in the same circumstances as this man. As hard as it is for some of us to hear now. Now imagine you're not being able to hear anything at all. Imagine that the only silent time is not just when you're sleeping, but also when you get up in the morning, when you eat lunch, when you're in the evening eating dinner, Everything is just silent, and then you go back to sleep. Imagine that you can't hear anything, and you can't move fast enough or away fast enough because something that is about to hurt you is going to end up hurting you because you can't hear it coming towards you. Imagine not being able to hear your baby for the first time. Imagine not being able to listen to your favorite music group or if you're like me, imagine not being able to hear the rain when it pours. Uh, it makes me fall asleep at times, literally. So those are the things that this man is going through. Now that you're there, and now that you are focused on not being able to hear, and you're just silent, add to that, you can't talk. You can't communicate. That impairment is there. Trying to meet people must be the most difficult thing out there. 
Why? Because if they don't have patience with you, they are not going to want to help you out. And what could have been a good thing turns out to be a nasty one. And so, back in those days, having to deal with that kind of sickness was a curse. It was not a good thing. And if I was this man, I wouldn't dare to go outside my house, not unless I went with somebody that I knew. Somebody that I trust personally. And that probably was three at best. Because I wouldn't want to go out. So this man is struggling with this sickness. And what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus does what Jesus knows how to do. And so forth, he does this different. He does a little different than most of the miracles that are written about him. He does not lay the hands like he normally did, but he does touch this man. And Jesus, not wanting the personal attention and the personal glory, he takes the man away from the crowd. That is something to say about Jesus. His time had not come yet. So he's like, you know what, come out here. And he did this on purpose, apart from not just wanting the personal, uh, not wanting the crowd to give him glory. He wanted this one-on-one -on -one attention with this man. It was a great crowd, mind you, in which many, seeing that Jesus performed this miracle, they might have taken to it to a certain extreme that they would have hyped it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I were to see a miracle of this stature in front of my face, I would have probably shout out joy somehow or the other. So Jesus doesn't want that. So there is Jesus and the mute man, a, man, a strange man that Jesus does not know his name. But yet Jesus cares for him. He cares for him so much that he takes him to the side. And he is alone with Jesus, removed from the excitement and the distraction of the crowd. His eyes are set on Jesus every move, and he understands that Jesus is about to do something for him. Now that his attention is fixed on Jesus alone, and obviously communication is an issue, and yes, Jesus will get it right. His action speaks to the deaf mute, See, Jesus starts to use sign language. Kind of like what we did earlier. Jesus starts to use sign language just not in the same way that you and I know of sign language. But he uses the one that is very personal. What does he do? He touches his ears. Both of his ears. And why does that draw attention? Well, because he's letting this man know, hey, listen, I'm about to do something for your ears, because he knows he can't hear nothing. So there he is, he pulls to the man's ears, and now he does something out of the ordinary. First the ears, and then the tongue. What does Jesus do? I'm sure that if some of us would have been seeing Jesus at that moment spit and then touch his tongue, you would be like, wow, that's so, where's Moshe on this? You know? And that's where Jesus is Jesus. He can do those things. And the miracle was going to still happen. He spit on his fingers, touches the man's tongue. And so is Jesus telling the man, listen, I'm going to heal your, heal your death, and I'm going to heal your muteness. And this is where the miracle happens. Now, let's pause there for a second. Not to say that the spit is the one who did the miracle. Because in those days, spit for some reason had the power to heal people. And that side of the world. And not to be confused again, that it is not the spit that healed. It was Jesus' mercy on this, on this man that the miracle occurred. Jesus is using what the man know, the superstition, to convey the message and also convey the miracle. Jesus continues with more sign language. The text tells us that Jesus does this. He does, besides, 
but not in a manner that is negative. You see, Jesus sighs in a manner that he's letting the man know that he has sympathy for him and that he cares for him. There's nothing negative about this sign. And then he looks up and letting this man know that his power comes from heaven. And that everything that is, he's about to do is granted to him from heaven. Again, a language that he can understand. So Jesus made sure that this man understood what he was about to do for him. After this man had been conveyed what Jesus was about to do, Jesus utters that famous word in our text, Ephatha, which means be open. And here Mark, Mark, and here Mark preserves the very syllables that came out of Jesus' mouth in doing this miracle. So we may not forget, it was just Ephatha, and it was open. So how does this miracle pertain to you and I? Well, Jesus sees a sinful world that is broken just like in the crowd. We are many broken people that are in need. Jesus sees many people live life full of struggle that constantly brings us down. We are many that want to follow Jesus and want to be with him because of our sinful condition. We cannot and we won't come to him by our own merits. It is our spiritual condition that is broken, full of evil and full of lies that draws us away from God. A hopeless life that has no happiness and nothing to look forward to. But we thank God for Jesus this beautiful morning. That in a way that is uniquely designed for your circumstances, just like in our story, there is Jesus that comes to you and separates you from your crowd. That is, from all that brokenness. And he starts to pick up every piece that is broken in your life, puts it together one by one to, your, to when you are whole again. It is Jesus that it comes to you, even when you don't see that light at the end of your tunnel when you're struggling, He is there to shine His light on you. It is Jesus that brings comfort to you as you struggle. It is Jesus that doesn't let you take a single step because you have drifted so far away from Him. Yet he comes to you. Just as Jesus was on the mission in our text today, he's still on the mission for you today. And the great thing is that there is no boundaries. There is no tiring or side anymore. His mercy extends to you because he shows compassion for you. It is His mercy that makes Him go out of the way for you to make that personal miracle. Just like the man that had his whole attention, Jesus today sees you. Even when evil has tried to overcome your life, He serves you personally every Sunday at the altar. It is Jesus that brings meaning to your life. It is Jesus that restores happiness to your life. And it is Jesus that is coming back for you. And it is Jesus that shows his love for you and his sacrifice. Amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
friend in Christ, I hold you all to lift up your heart to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and bring the promise to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on us, and grant us your grace, that your good name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of you of your world and for the love shown forth in life. Gracious turn from us all for doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blessed in and profane Lord in your words. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ your son by faith that the number of Christians may be increased, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and death, in the midst of both good and all evil things, that our own wills may be crucified then and sanctified to your good and gracious will. In your merciful hand we command sick, People, Jim, Dan, Carol, Rosemary, Mike, Veteran, Bobby, Toki, Lynn, Don, Carolyn, Ned, Jim, Jay, Carl, Heather, Jimmy, Taylor, Ellen, George, Linda, Karen, Cari, Simon, Carol, Mark, Nash, Linda, Vera, Herman, Stephanie, Megan, Judy, Avis, Ron, Darren, Jane, Lisa, Mark, Rob, Anna, Jacqueline, Oli, Anna, Ina, Billy, Anthony, Steve, Tony, Rob, Russell, and also military service members, Luna, Scott, Dan, Kevin, Rachel, Abby, Scott, Thomas, Tim, Tim, Jonathan, Josh, Paul, Chandler, Stephens, Michelle, Randall, Hayden, Chris, Sean, Stephen, Evan, Blaze, Paul, Nathan. Also, we remember those who are suffering from the hurricane. Either feel Lord grant them recovery from the death as soon as possible. As all who I live, pray for them at all times. Thy will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant us our daily bread, of us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us, Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all its wiles, Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We trust, O oh Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The Lord will be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly God right and accepted in the wishes at all times, in all places. Give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only cousin son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your son in true faith, and over all, for me take to heart the world with which you Christ gives us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous death and from sin death hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift and guarantee and pledge of his salvation. Gracious to receive our prayers, to live and preach of us to you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor worship, be the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray according to the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and at his coming, and with his own word, we receive this testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was a betrayed to bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, all they took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of your cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This too, as often as you drink it, in the memory of me.
locations can be interviewed to face live violence, departing kids and girls. Amen.
Peace.